The other day I was praying about uh, some of the stuff that's going on in our world today and just uh, asking the Lord for wisdom. And there's a bunch of things I just don't understand. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about some of the things that David wrote about, you know, and things about, you know, and I th might think it might have even been Jeremiah too that talked about why do the wicked prosper, you know. And, and there's so many false teachers out there now and it's just it's just increasing all the time and and people that I thought were saved and it's just like and you know I don't know if they're still saved I have no idea but you know like I say they they really do their best to convince me that they're not saved I mean it's just it's crazy people that have have claimed that they loved and trusted this ministry for years and years and years and it's just like they just turn right around and they're just stabbing me in the back and saying I'm lost and all kinds of other stuff and you know I just want people to understand when I talk about this it's not that I'm, you know, my feelings are hurt and I'm going, why is this happening? No, 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 that isn't it. I'm just looking at this stuff going like, whatever, it's, you know, ridiculous. Um, I'm a bit thicker skinned than that. I understand that this persecution comes on you and all that other stuff, so fine. But, you know, something that is just like, I don't understand, you know, I was just saying, Lord, I don't, I don't quite get why are these guys not being judged? I mean, I've seen people in the past, years ago, that I had dealings with and stuff, and it was like God would be just be like, Phew. I mean, he'd judge them. I mean, I've seen marriages fall apart as a result of people turning on the Word of God, um, uh, health problems, heart attacks. I mean, I've seen the Lord deal harshly with people, and it's just like the Lord is just not dealing quite like that. And I'm just going to be, I'm just going to tell you what the Lord really revealed to me, and it's like. The reason he's not judging a lot of these people right now is because we're that close to the rapture. And that's going to be the real judgment. Think about that. You see, the rapture has multiple purposes to it. We understand it's the redemption of the purchased possession. Our bodies are finally going to be redeemed. We're going to be delivered from the bondage of corruption. A lot of great things, you know, the, the blood that was shed on the cross to pay for us that bought us the purchase price that, you know, the saints are going to be, you know, the dead in Christ go up first, and we which are alive and remain caught up together with them in the clouds, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. It's a comforting hope. It's, it's, there's a lot that happens. But, you know, a big part of it is it's also going to separate saved and lost. There are no lost people that are going to get, you know, just, oh, it was, I'm standing too close to this Christian, and I just went up with them, you know, and how would I get here? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, saved people go up, lost people stay down. So all of a sudden, it's going to sort out who was really saved and who wasn't. It's a judgment. I did a sermon years ago on that, the pre-trib rapture judgment. It's going to be a very harsh judgment. A lot of people out there that think that they're saved, they're not going up. I know you don't have to be you know, in agreement with me to be saved or whatever else. I mean, I get lied about so much, it's incredible. But uh, just going to give you this uh, Psalm 35 here. We're going to go through it, uh, just read through these verses here. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of these things I've seen in my own life. And you're going you're gonna to relate to this psalm. It's incredible. Uh, it's a really comforting thing. You know, when you're going through this stuff and you're getting knocked around, and then you read it in the Bible, and it's like, that's exactly what's happening to me. It's incredible. So let's go through Psalm 35. Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for mine help. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that per persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame and that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Let them be as chaff before the wind, and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery, and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. I find that interesting, because a lot of these people that are just, you know, they're just twisting Scripture. It's incredible to see these people, the way that they'll answer things being brought against them. They'll just twist things and twist arguments. It used to be, you know, you'd bring out documentation and show proof, and people, they'd back off, you know. Now it's just like they'll look at your proof that condemns them, and they'll just be like, well, actually, what, and they'll just lie their way through the thing. It's incredible. What's going on? They're wandering around in the darkness. Interesting. Verse 7. For without cause have they hid for me their net in a pit, with which cause 
or, or excuse me, which without cause they have digged for my soul. Yeah, very true. Let destruction come upon him at unawares, and let his net that he hath hid catch himself into that very destruction, let him fall. It's funny because a lot of these guys that attack me are post-tribbers, and they're going, there ain't going to be any rapture. For them, that's very true. Um, verse 9, And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. It's going to be very true. You know, my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. Almost like a rapture. Mm -hmm. Verse 10, All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee, which deliverest the poor from him that is too strong for him, yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoileth him? False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. <laughs> I mean, I can't tell you how many times I'm reading comments and I'm going, what? I never said that. I never, what? <laughs> you know, like, what are you talking about? You know, <laughs> they had laid, it, laid to my charge things that I knew not. I've been charged with all kinds of weird stuff. And I'm going, where did they even get that from? <laughs> Verse 12, they rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into mine own bosom. I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one that mourneth for his mother. When these people are attacking me, I don't, you know, it, it might come out sometimes that, oh, you, you know, Brian really hates his, these enemies of his. No, I don't. No, I don't. I'd like to see everybody get saved. I really would. And salvation is not the beliefs of Brian Denlinger. I understand that. Okay, but I understand false converts when I see them. I understand Lordship Salvation people that teach that there has to be a total life change before salvation. That's heresy. I understand easy believism people that teach no repentance. It's just you pray a little prayer. They eat, you one, two, three, repeat after me. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. You know, you do that, or you have the the other wing nuts that are saying that there is no prayer involved. You just by an act of your own will, you say, "I believe." I don't have to ask God for anything. I just take it. You know, but my soul looks to those people and says, I wish that they'd get saved. And I come out and I show the truth of what they're doing. I show their heresy. And I've had some people actually come. I've had many followers of Stephen Anderson come to me and say, you know, I used to hate your guts and I used to think you were crazy. Then I started looking up what you were saying in Scripture and you were right. And I'm sorry for acting such and such towards you. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to go, you were a friend of Stephen Anderson, then you're no friend of mine. I don't care, you know. Some guy come, he's a Jesuit or something like this, or some sodomite or some transvestite or whatever your sins are. I don't care. I want you to get saved. I want you to leave at the rapture. I don't want anybody to go through the time of Jacob's trouble that's coming. I want to see people get saved. Verse 15. Uh, but in my adversity, they rejoiced. Anything bad that happens to my wife or I or whatever else, they'll rejoice about it. And gathered themselves together, like Facebook pages or Google things. <laughs> Yea, the abjects gathered themselves together against me, and I knew it not. They did tear me and ceased not. You know, again, i got to just say this, because it's so amazing. The Word of God is just such an amazing living book. It's just like, wow. They gathered you know, themselves together against me, and I knew it not. I've seen people, and it's just like, you know, they were a friend of the ministry, and all of a sudden I'm going... What happened? Huh? And they're on some other channel and somebody's like, hey, did you know so-and-so stabbing you in the back? And I'm going, what? I used to recommend their channel. Or I, I, I thought they were a friend. <laughs> what happened? Oh, well, they're gathering themselves together against me. You know? And I, you, know don't, you don't have to write in the comments. Well, you know, just be encouraged, Brian. That's the way it's supposed to happen. I know. I know. I know. I'm not discouraged. It's exciting to see this stuff coming to pass. Verse 16. With hypocritical mockers and feasts, they gnashed upon me with their teeth. <laughs> Brian Nellinger exposed. Husky 394 exposed. You know, coming out with this stuff. I saw one at one time. It was like, this is a CIA funded house and I'm like controlled by my wife. She's military CIA. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah. Um, <clears throat> verse 17. Lord, how long wilt thou look on? Yeah. Rescue my soul from their destructions, my darling from the lions. 
I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. That's the rapture, brethren. I will give thee thanks in the great con congregation. Body of Christ together for the first time. No false converts were there. The redemption of the purchased possession. Redeemed our bodies. We're now in incorruptible bodies. No more temptation to sin. Think there's going to be some praising going on? Yes. Verse 19. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. For they speak not peace, but they uh, devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. Yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha! Aha! Our eye hath seen it. Have you seen Dunlinger's recent video? Oh, he comes. He's such a stinking heretic. Let me show you. Let me just, you know. I think it's, I saw somebody in the comments and they're like, well, you do the same with Stephen Anderson. Yeah, because he's a heretic, you know. And I want to see the guy get saved. Is it going to happen? Probably not, but I'd like to see it happen. I'd like to see him get saved. Verse 22. This thou hast seen, O Lord. Keep not silence, O Lord. Be not far from me. Stir up thyself and awake to my judgment, and even unto my cause, my God and my Lord. Judge me, O Lord, my God, according to thy righteousness, and let them not rejoice over me. It's a wonderful thing when God judges you. Why? Because God will judge you in a way as a loving father. And he'll say, son, daughter, that needs to go. Is it bad? It's very bad. I'm going to show you why. But get rid of it. Okay? It's a wonderful thing to be judged by God. Verse 25. Let them not say in their hearts, Ah, so would we have it. Let them not say we have swallowed him up. Let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice at mine hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor that magnify themselves against me. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified. I love that which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. Interesting. You know, we have been going through this thing just to, you know, we're looking at different places right now and we're considering things. We, you know, we aren't going to know for sure about the sale of the property till July 17th. That's the closing date. Um, but there's other things that are happening and we're going and we're checking places and stuff like this. And the Lord's you know, really making stuff happen. And uh, I still have another vehicle to sell and we got to have the property thing, uh, sale of the property um, finalized and everything else. But um, the Lord is prospering us and we're not millionaires. For goodness sake, we're not, you know, just rolling in the money or anything like that. But, you know, the Lord is, is opening doors for us to get a place where we're going to be a lot better organized. Um, just again, if you are brand new to this ministry, if you don't know the story, uh, we bought land intending to build there, to live, you know, very cheap off grid. And then we bought this old house here that we were just going to run the ministry from eventually. And we ended up living here because we couldn't get back to our land to build. We moved here in January of 2014. Yeah, two, yeah, 2014. Bought the place in 2013, moved in 2014, January. Middle of January, kind of a rough thing in Maine. But the whole point is we spent years and years and years trying to build over at our property, and it just didn't happen. We had issues with a Catholic neighbor and bad situation, and then a bad situation when he died. So we sold the property, and we're going to be selling this place because we can't. I mean, we've, like, way outgrown this place, uh, you know, especially having a son, and we want to be able to help people in the future and things. We can't have anybody come here uh, and help them, you know, give them a place to stay for a little bit or whatever, teach them Bible, things like that. It's just this place is tiny. So, you know, we're working on some things there, and I'm, I'm glad to see when my brothers and sisters in Christ, you know my heart, you know why I do this, you know my wife, uh, her motivations for being in the ministry with me, and you rejoice when you see the Lord doing good things in our lives. Um, you know, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. This ministry has a righteous cause. Um, by God's grace, through God's leading and through God's help, um, I've been able to rebuke some things that I don't know anybody else 
of anybody else that's ever rebuked these things. The Lord has shows us things and, and, and has shown us some amazing things. And there's still a lot more stuff that we have to bring out. But this organization is just terrible right now in this place. Uh, some big, really big, huge things to bring out. But, and it's wonderful when I see my brothers and sisters in Christ that say, we favor your righteous calls, Brother Brian. We understand what you're doing. We understand the calls of, of why you're trying to get this stuff out. And you favor that, you know. Um, yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified. That's exactly it. This ministry has never been about Brian Denlinger. I will never call this Brian Denlinger Ministries or Denlinger and Sons Ministries or, you know, Denlinger and Denlinger and Denlinger. You know, hey, we could be a trinity. But, <laughs> you know, uh, father, son, and, and my wife. I'm being silly there. Um, I'm never going to say that. It's King James Video Ministries, okay, because my Bible is a King James Bible. So that's why I call it that. Um, but, you know, let the Lord be magnified by this ministry. That's why nothing I've ever done is copyrighted. You can give my videos out and stuff, get them out there for free, put them on your channel. Um, just don't monetize it, okay? That's just cheap, taking money from the lost world. Um, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Um, praise the Lord for that. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteous, righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. Well, I'm never going to get to a point where I'm doing videos all day, every day, because I have other things to do in life. Even when we have our final place and we're going to be, you know, uh, have a place set apart for the ministry and our living area, we're going to have, you know, not sure how it's all going to work out yet, but, you know, we're going to have efficiency, finally, be able to be organized and not, you know, when we got right now, it's just, we have conversations all the time. I mean, this is just like, um, ministry central here you know and, and we just um, we have books you know that are down in the kitchen and you know and up here in my recording studio there's stuff that belongs downstairs and this is you know some of my son's toys are laying around and things and he comes up here while I'm working on a sermon or whatever else and it's just like <laughs> this is not efficient so uh, the goal is eventually to have a separate ministry office and a separate place to live um, that's that's what we're looking at, uh, and I certainly do appreciate those that uh, pray for the ministry, those that donate to the ministry. Um, we just appreciate our friends very much, more than you can know. Uh, your your words of encouragement, things, and, and everything, and you know, and I and I appreciate my enemies. I really do. Sometimes I'll get an actual creative comment from an enemy, not just something just blasting me and attacking me and making fun of me and whatever else. I actually get some creative you know, constructive criticism sometimes. Some things that I have to look it up and I say, oh, you know what, that's a good point. And, um, you know, most of them are just stupid nonsense attacks and things. And that confirms what we just read this morning, or not this morning, but what we just read here. Um, so, but I appreciate it, you know, appreciate everybody. <laughs> so, but uh, just wanted to encourage you know, you out there. I mean, one of the reasons that the Apostle Paul talked about a lot of his struggles was to encourage younger people that were younger in the faith. That's the reason I do this. That's the reason I talk about some of the struggles that we have, some of the attacks that come upon us. I'm not saying, you know, stop attacking me. You know, I, I think a lot of people don't understand. You know, I'm going to be sharing my testimony, more details of my testimony in the, in the future. Um, I've had a lot of rough things, r rough past and stuff like that. Um, you know, very much into extreme motorsports and uh, just really dangerous living. Um, stuff that most people would be afraid to do. And so to me, I'm just like, <laughs> people attack me. It's just kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, that stuff has happened in the past. I'm not some kind of little bookworm, little college educated. Um, perfumed princess that just has lived his life on a satin pillow. I'm not. I'm used to pain. I'm used to cussing, you know, co-workers and, and really, really rough uh, living. You know, I'll talk about that sometime when I come out with a testimony. But uh, so please, you know, when I'm, when I'm talking about this stuff, I'm trying to relate what goes on when you're in ministry, what goes on when you're a Christian and show how to get through that stuff. That's what I'm doing. Um, but uh, we do appreciate everybody's prayers. Uh, 
so please keep praying for us as we're looking for uh, a house and, and things and, and uh, real good direction for the future. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.